Hello again, and welcome to another Applied Engine 6 2 tutorial. This tutorial is all going to be about the automation of our inscribers. First of all, I'm going to start on looking at the printed variants of the processors and how we can expand it from a simple one inscriber. And then I'm going to talk about how we can combine it to form our processors. And once again, how we can then go and then link that with the first stage to try and make it all automated with a one-click system. As always, any comments and likes would be greatly appreciated. Thanks. So here in front of me I've got a basic system, ME drive, power cell and an ME crafting terminal with a crafting and co-crafting unit on it with a inscriber. On one side of the inscriber I've got a flat ME interface and coming out the other side I've got an input bus that's what we're going to use to extract all our items back into our system. So first, to be able to automate inscribers, we're going to have to make up some patterns. So you've got to make sure that this here is set to the processing pattern. And you're going to need one of your raw materials that you're going to use to craft and the final product as well. So you want to take one of your, say, silicons in this case, pop it on that side, and you print it silicon and pop it on that side. And then click on the blank pattern and it will encode it. So we can see it says, with one silicon, it creates one printed silicon. Brilliant, good. So what we'll do is also grab our silicon press and we're going to go to the inscriber and in the ME interface we're going to put our encoded pattern. Uh, inside our inscriber we can just shift click our inscriber silicon press. So what happens when we click the craft button the ME interface is going to request one piece of the um, raw silicon and then it's going to put it into the inscriber into the right slot. The inscriber is then going to crush it down and, and form it and then the input bus is going to automatically pull it back out and put it back straight back into our system. So if we take out this printed silicon we can see that there it says craft and when we click on this click one and click next and then start we can see that the inscriber has now got a piece of silicon in and it's automatically pushed it down and pulled it back out into our system and placed it back in there for us. You can use this process for all the other presses, for the calculation, the engineering and the logic. All you need to do say is for the um, engineering press put up diamond and then put the printed version over here and click encode which I'll show you those in a few secs that they do actually work. So quickly yeah, just put the pure, say search course in there, printed one in there, encode, get your your um, inscriber press and you can put it in here like this you can always actually put this in here with it as well and just have all four and change the press as you may want to you see craft oh of course we are see once again it's gone in and it's pushing it down and it'll automatically pull it out put it back into our system. I've set up this tower like structure in front of us. It has a total of 16 inscribers and we can have dedicate four for each of the presses so you know, calculation, logic, silicon and engineering. And I've, I've done it the same way as I did before with the interface on one side and the input bus on the other and this keeps going around interface and then the input bus. So this does use up all 32 channels because each one of these is one channel so we've got two four six eight so this is why I use glass cable here and once again on each side I've got glass cable running up in the middle I've just got this green cable here is our power I've got it running to the back of all of them and this doesn't actually use up any channels because it's just power in the system so you also need an ME controller for this as well I've gone and filled each one of these ME interfaces with a silicon pattern, like so. And what we'll do is quickly just fill these inscribers up with the presses. I've just got it hooked up back to our other system over here. So as we see this time it says craft and what we can do is say choose four at a time. And we should see all these going together. And we've got four, so we can make this process go four times as quick as with the other one. 
You could also go and fill each one of these up with the same, say all of them up with silicon. But remember you'd have to take these out manually, so I recommend using four different ones in each to make it go really nice and quick. Okay, so there, that bit was nice and easy. So now to make it a little bit harder, we want to be able to combine the silicon and also our other processors with redstone to form our processor. So over here, a little bit more complicated, but same sort of system, cells, crafting, ME drive, controller with a dense cable. So this time I've got an inscriber and I've used the full block ME interface at the bottom here. This is to allow the power to actually go up through the interface. So because we're having to use more faces, we don't want to have to limit ourselves to what we can and cannot put energy in because if we use a flat version we'd also have to have another cable to provide power to the inscriber. So on the left hand side of this inscriber I've got an ME export bus. So this is going to export something from our system constantly into our inscriber and it's pushed into the side here so it's going to push in to where this ingot looking thing is. So what we're going to do is put a piece of redstone in here like that and what you'll see is the inscriber fills up with redstone. Even when we take this piece of redstone out, the system replenishes it straight back again. So we don't have to worry about that. That's good. Now, the second bit is the export bus on top. Same sort of system. It's going to extract straight away from our system. Now this is this slot here up top. Now what I'm going to do is put the printed silicon in here. Up top. And as you can see, same sort of thing again, will automatically extract from our system and place on top. Cool. So the next bit is doing the pattern for the ME interface in order to put it into the bottom. So to do this, you're going to have to get one of your printed engineering circuits, or well, any of the, any of the circuits, put them into the pattern terminal, and you're going to have to get the final product, the engineering, in this case the engineering processor, and right click over there once again set to processing pattern and we click it to form that so this says with one printed circuit gives us one processor notice that I haven't actually included the, the redstone or the silicon in this so if I go over to our ME interface and go and put this in the bottom here so when we click craft it will just put in the printed engineering circuit which is fine because we've already got automatically silicon put in there and redstone and oh, and on the other side here, I've just got a, an input bus doing the same job as before. So let's take that out of the system. And we can see there's a craft right here. So let's click on the next. And we should see it all combining together and then being automatically removed. There you go. And you can see that it's refilled straight away back up with redstone and silicon. Once again, I've taken this a little bit further. And I've taken it up to four inscribers. So this is going on the basis of with our tower we can print four of any of the, the printed process at one time and then we can go and combine these all together as well. So once again I've just got the pattern terminal, the drive, power, controller, and a dense cable running on the bottom. And I've used red here for the energy into the ME interface all along. I've still got the export boss on the left hand side and the input bus on the right hand side but then I've got an alt alternated it so with the next inscriber I've gone and used the import bus and then the export bus, export bus, import, import, export and on top I've just got the export buses so once again export bus with a printed silicon this time you're going to notice I've added this, it's a crafting card this says that when we need to put this in, the printed silicon if there is none available in the system it will try and craft it for us so hopefully we should never have to try and remember to print the silicon in order for it to get put straight in there in the export bus once again redstone and in the ME interface I've already gone and put all these patterns and the input bus is left blank again so this time when we can click on craft oh got to mention as well inside the inscriber I've also got these accelerator cards this will make the process go much quicker I really would recommend at least one preferably two but three does make it go so much quicker so let's go and click four and you see that's done in a matter of seconds and it's already there right for us 
Okay, so let's say we want to take this further as well. And instead of having 4, we want to print 8. So this is, means the system is going to have to print a total of 8 of these printed engineering circuits as we have none currently in our inventory. Each one of the inscribers already has one silicon in, so that's already 4 printed in there. So it's all going to have to print another 4 silicon as well. And then go and combine each one of these to form 8 of the engineering processors. So let's see how the system handles. So as we click start, the tower will be printing up those diamonds and then pushing them into our inscribers with the silicon to give us the full engineering process. At the same time, the, the inscribers would, would have ran out of the printed silicon, telling the tower to print up the full silicon and also the, dime, the engineering and then combine it in the inscribers. Because of the way the system is set up though with the crafting units, it sort of tells it to print one silicon at a time and then one engineering, which makes it a little bit slower. But it also is quicker than having to tell it to print A and then come back and tell it to print A. And there we go. A is done. As useful as this is being able to auto craft all our processors, we can take this a step further with adding it to our auto crafting abilities. So let's go and add say an image interface on here with a molecular assembler. If we go to our pattern drive. So under the crafting pattern, let's say we want to go and create a ME drive. We can go and shift click on this question mark and it's going to put it straight into our pattern for us right there. Let's get rid of that. And encode this pattern. So what it's going to say is to create one ME drive, we're going to use two glass cable, which we have, four iron, which we have, and two engineering processes that we don't have. And we know from this, we also have to go and create the printed engineering circuits and the printed silicon as well from it. So let's go and put that in there. So when we go back and click on the craft for the ME drive, we can see that once again it does say have to craft and have to craft. So the ability to link all this in means that instead of having to do multiple clicks and wait for things to craft, we can simply have a one click craft, which you can see here. That means it's more time saving, especially on really, really long crafts. It may take minutes or hours. You can simply just click and then leave it to run and come back to the final product. I hope that this tutorial has gone and been useful to you and helped you try and get your head a bit more around auto crafting of the um, all the different processors and how better to use the inscribers and how to try and make it a little bit co more compact such as in this system over here or in this tower system because you can block it in quite nicely with things like facades and stuff like that to make it look quite small. Um, thank you all for watching and any likes or comments will be greatly appreciated.